Alrighty, welcome back everybody to our latest live stream. I hope that everybody is doing well this afternoon. Uh, we do have actually a decent amount of stuff to get to in this forecast. This live stream will primarily start off mainly in Oklahoma and Texas. Kind of work our way also off to the eastern plains of Missouri because we have some severe weather developments starting there as well. Uh, I'll give you the latest breakdown of what's going on on the radar right now because we do have some severe weather ongoing up in Oklahoma. And uh, that's kind of what we're we'll doing, focusing on at least over the next several minutes. And we'll also go up to the northeast. Now, uh, again, if you have any questions during this live stream, feel free to let me know in the chat chat if you're new here again make sure to subscribe button like the video down below it helps our page out tremendously and uh this live stream will probably be an hour or two long it will not be a long live stream but it'll probably just be one of those like you know one to two hour live streams that you know i've been doing for the last few days anyways all right let's get right into the severe weather that we got ongoing uh obviously a lot of stuff has actually happened over here in oklahoma over the last several hours we've had a lot of severe weather ongoing um a lot of these storms have produced damaging winds as high as 85 miles per hour so there actually has been some very very strong and very severe i should say uh storms already as of right now now, though near Oklahoma City we have a severe thunderstorm warning that's about to expire the overall storm has weakened out uh, but this was producing damaging winds as high as 70 miles per hour and it was also producing some nickel sized hail so it was actually a pretty strong storm here over Oklahoma City I'm not sure how much damage we've had yet I'm gonna try to get to see if we have any live cams and whatnot as well during this forecast to kind of see what we got going as of right now but there was a uh, uh, at least a very strong winds which probably uh, provided for some damage there in Oklahoma City there's also broken tree limbs over in Nichols or Nichols Hills that was also just to the north of Oklahoma City so we've had some pretty potent storms again go through that location and as of right now we have a very very defined outflow boundary that extends all the way back up to the north near Oklahoma City going all the way through Frederick and as well as Duncan so we're going to see more storm development over the next several hours I know a lot of you are from Kansas and uh, you've been waiting for the rain and it's finally here it seems like at least some rain overall it's nothing you know significant but it at least is something for us to kind of get our minds off of all this heat for at least a you know a few hours here's a look at the other severe thunderstorms that we got out back off to the north this is over in far western Oklahoma near Crawford and Durham this is currently producing some damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour and it's also producing some half dollar sized hail again that storm is currently moving very slowly uh, over the last several minutes it's been pretty stationary it is moving slightly to the southeast but uh, it is moving very slowly as of right now just west of 283 and again that storm will likely weaken out in about an hour or so since it's just moving so slowly and away from that outflow boundary another storm ongoing as well near Putnam right now and it's also near Camargo this is producing damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour maybe some penny sized hail this includes Tologa as well as Leedy, Leedy and as well as uh, Putnam and as well as Camargo as I said before so those areas included and that severe storm that is moving down to the south as of right now now this storm I believe the warning is about to expire in five minutes it probably got canceled because I don't think let's see um looks like yeah so as of now it looks like it got uh, canceled so this warning is actually canceled but this was the storm that produced a wind gust of 83 miles per hour at the uh, mezzonite station over in Bess bessie so uh this was a pretty significant damaging wind gust again 83 miles per hour this was definitely our uh, strongest downburst so far today and again there might be more of that over the next few hours it's definitely not out of the question as these storms move down to the south now we have a lot of shower and storm activity right now from frederick back over to chattanooga uh lawton as well marlow and bray those areas are all seeing some showers and storms and again some strong downburst winds definitely not out of the question with that uh let me turn off temperatures here real quick because that's kind of in the way but uh that's kind of what we're looking at right now down here to the south and uh, that will obviously continue over the next several hours we got more strong storms as well west of childress these might be producing some gusty winds let's take a look at the velocities as of right now uh and as of right now these storms overall a little bit of maybe some gusty winds west of childress closer to areas like frederick maybe some gusty winds as well with those storms they're producing maybe some 35 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts there near cash as of right now there's about a 40 mile per per hour wind gust up that way so we're definitely seeing some damaging or not damaging excuse me some gusty winds over there also maybe some damaging winds as i mentioned before back over here in western oklahoma and again those storms will be moving down to the south over the next little while we actually have a severe thunderstorm warning as well over in new mexico we have one as well over in missouri again we'll be kind of going over that severe weather here as well in this forecast we got some stuff up in montana i probably will not be paying attention too much to that stuff but uh that's kind of what we got going as of right now across at least oklahoma so that's kind of what we got all right Hey, Blocky, how you doing? As well, Savannah, how you guys all doing? 1920s. And Sarah, how you guys all doing? Welcome. How you doing, Tabs? Welcome back. Appreciate it. I'm doing pretty good, Annie. How, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty decent. Hello from Iowa. Hope you're doing well up there in Iowa, Denise. Hey, Douglas, how you doing? Welcome back. As well as Moxie, how you doing? Anything in Michigan? I don't think so today. Michigan will probably be staying dry today. Possibly something... Tom or not tomorrow but possibly on late sunday and then monday there might be something but i don't think michigan's seen much today 
there is a marginal risk of severe weather severe weather i can't talk uh there's a marginal risk of severe weather by the way uh tomorrow that just got extended into texas and this actually includes almost all of north texas by the way into central and even western texas so there is actually a new marginal risk of severe weather for tomorrow goes through louisiana southern arkansas uh and again i'll have a lot i'll have a bit more of a forecast for that uh later tomorrow probably uh we also had a funnel cloud recently spot over in polk county iowa by the way so this is new uh let me go back up to this storm real quick and see what we got here real quick because there was actually this was like 12 minutes ago we had a funnel cloud report over in des moines and my software i think froze it did all right cool i guess we won't look at it yet apparently there's a funnel cloud though reported here we'll get to that here in a second all right, let me go back to my live chat Finally raining in Southern Illinois. There you go. It's actually not bad. Luckily you're getting some rain. At least it's not severe, I would assume. What in the world happened here? This was reported at 613 Central Time. That was 17 minutes ago. But is there not a storm here? Or is this might have been like a delayed report or something, but this literally just got reported. That's strange. Okay, well, I guess we didn't have a funnel cloud report. That might have been from maybe earlier. It came in really late, though. Yeah, there's nothing there. Okay, well, I guess that must have been, must have come in late. Okay, we're going back down here then. I was say, I didn't think we'd have anything up in Iowa to begin with today. And my software literally just crashed it in. There's no way. Oh my God, dude. This is so annoying. All right. Hey, Hopping Rabbit, how you doing? Welcome back. All right, we're going to hopefully stay on this area and hopefully it doesn't crash this time. All right, cool. There we go. Uh, we have more damaging wind reports, by the way, over in Oklahoma City from the severe weather that went through that area. Uh, we actually had half dollar size tail reported in Canadian. We also had a power pull down. We had, it looks like, along Grand Boulevard, east of Western. There was damage to power poles and tree limb damage in Nichols Hills. And there was also broken tree limbs in Nichols Hills as well. And a blown down metal fence as well in Valley Brook, which is, again, basically on the outskirts of Oklahoma City there. Again, we had 70 mile per hour wind gust reports as well there. So definitely had some damaging winds along with all that other stuff. So definitely interesting there. Thanks, Sherry. I appreciate it. All right. Hey, uh, Away, how you doing? Welcome back. Yeah, Michigan's not going to see anything today. Again, this is the main severe weather that we got ongoing as of right now. We might see some more developments again back down in southern Oklahoma over the next hour. But as of right now, damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour. And as well as, where'd my phone go? I lost my phone. Uh, as well as half dollar size tail as possible, though, in those areas. Where did I actually put my phone? I actually lost my phone. I don't know where it went. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Welcome back. Hey, Scorpion, how you doing? Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Doing good weather. How you doing today? It's so rainy. All right, let's go back down here. Um, I have to figure out where my phone went. I actually don't. I lost my phone. Don't know where it went. I left it somewhere else. Uh, again, this is the storm activity down in southwestern Oklahoma, by the way. These storms are moving down to the south. And those will again be moving into North Texas here pretty soon. Um, but I might, let me take a look. Uh, let's go over to Missouri real quick. Let's take a look at the severe weather over that direction. Because we do have a few severe thunderstorm warnings ongoing. And this is an area, again, that might have some development tonight. As of right now, there's a 20% chance we get a watch issued for this area. This storm over here, south of Farmington and near Fredericktown, this is producing some damaging winds around 60 miles per hour and as well as some penny sized hail. And again, that's moving down to the south, east southeast, excuse me. So that'll be a storm to watch pretty closely. Again, that's moving down to the east southeast. We also got a special weather statement near Mount Vernon in West Frankfurt and Carbondale. This is producing some gusty winds upwards of 40 miles per hour and again this will be an area to watch a little bit there might be a few storms that develop in this area again a very low end tornado threat still exists but overall it should be primarily damaging winds tonight um somebody asked about georgia let's go over to georgia there's actually a severe thunderstorm warning over in southern georgia right now that is likely for damaging winds and it is so this is producing some damaging winds around 60 miles per hour and as well as nickel sized tail that's also moving down to the south and uh, that's currently just off to the southwest of camellia and that's also going to be in vada as well as hogard mill 
Branchville, Hopeful, and Harrellstill. Those areas are included in this warning ongoing. Again, that's moving down to the south right now. A lot of actually showers and really just storms across this area too. We actually got a few stronger storms near the interstate, Interstate 75, and that's just to the south now of Tifton. So these could also be producing some gusty winds upwards of 55 miles per hour. A lot of rain, it looks like, across eastern portions of Georgia. So that's what we got going over there as of right now. Um, north of Charlotte, there's also a couple of storms ongoing there. I don't know if we have any good radar sites over here. I thought we had one near Charlotte, but I guess we don't. Uh, let me go over to the one near Raleigh, though. There's an all, another severe thunderstorm warning over on, ongoing over here. This is south of Elkin uh, near Harmony. This is producing some damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour. And again, that includes Harmony, Love Valley, Turnersburg, Olin, Union Grove, Cool Springs, and Scotts. So those areas are included in that warning ongoing as of right now. That's, again, moving down to the south as of right now. Thanks, Roshan. I appreciate it. Hey, Storm Chaser. How are you doing? Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Uh, this is Dex Rad 2, Shane. It's the radar type that is used. Uh, we have a new severe thunderstorm warning as well over here in uh, Alabama right now. This is producing some damaging winds of 60 miles per hour. That's for Petray and as well as Lurvine. Those areas are included as well as uh, Rutledge and Highland Home. Those areas are included in that new warning. That literally just got issued a minute ago for damaging winds again up to 60 miles per hour and penny-sized hail. Moving down again to the south-southeast. So we got a couple of storms, as I mentioned before, over there. And uh, again, we got some going on in Missouri and as well, as I mentioned before, over here in Oklahoma. And we actually have a new wind report of 65 miles per hour over here in uh, southern Oklahoma. That's actually associated with the outflow boundary, I'm pretty sure. Or actually, no, there's actually a little storm that developed there. This actually apparently produced 65 mile per hour winds. This was a uh, strong downburst storm, which again, any severe weather over in Oklahoma and Texas today is all going to be from strong downburst winds. And if any storms develop in brief, even brief storms can, you know, pose that threat for 65, 70 mile per hour wind gusts. Again, we had an 83 mile per hour uh, storm earlier over in Bessie. So we've definitely had some pretty high winds already today. Uh, anything in Louisville, Kentucky? Uh, let me take a look. I thought there was going to be a second round of storms tonight. Uh, let me double check real quick. I'm not entirely sure if anything's changed. I haven't been really around in, for about five hours now, so I haven't really looked. Uh, yeah, possibly overnight there might be a couple of storms that roll through that area. Overall, damaging winds can be the main threats in those locations, though. So. Let's take a look at the hail radar on this storm. This hail actually looks a little bit larger than maybe half dollars right now. Let's go over to the hail and take a look. By the way, if you're just tuning in for the first time, again, I would appreciate if you hit the like button. We are nine likes away from uh, 50, so I would appreciate if you hit the like button. Right, let's go over to the hail radar. Take a look if you got any hailstones with this storm. Again, it is producing, as of now, it says half dollar size. Take a look at the radar is estimating otherwise. And uh, actually, as of right now, it's estimating possibly as high as golf ball size, but that might be a little bit of an overestimate. But that is, again, west of 283. So it's the hail that we're seeing out of that storm. The one over here near Camargo right now is producing up to penny-sized hail, which it is estimated right around penny-sized hail as well as of now. And again, this storm over near Cordell that was ongoing produced possibly up to golf ball size as well. I don't know if it really got that high, though. Uh, there was hail reported over in Yukon, but I can't really go off of that since that was a while ago. There might have been up to quarter size hail in Oklahoma City, but that was not reported either. So uh, that was, again, from earlier. So, so far, it looks like the hail might be just a little bit overestimated so far. That's kind of what we got going as of right now, again, over in Oklahoma. Let me go back over to the, let's take off the hail radar again. Here we go. Hey, Zero, how you doing? Nope, any max velocities. Now, nah, there's no rotation as of right now. Again, the tornado threat tonight will be pretty low. Only tornado threat that does exist tonight is across Kentucky, which is going to be pretty much a bit more of an overnight threat. But overall, brief, and basically anything that happens tonight will be brief. Brief and weak tornadoes, kind of what we saw yesterday, if there was any yesterday, which I don't think there was really many, but there might have been a couple. They were only brief and weak. That's going to be the same thing that we see today. And again, going into Saturday and Sunday, tornado threat will slightly increase back up in the far northern plains. Uh, later so that's kind of what we're expecting as of right now got a couple of showers and a little storms also developing in far northwestern north texas near wichita falls by the way so again some other stuff to watch as of right now again a lot of lightning with these storms by the way we're also going to see again that potential for damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour over the next hour and a half again in the southern plains so that's what we're going to see for tonight yeah weather that's old <laughs> i haven't changed it i gotta change that that's from like back in the spring it is a uh, very old indeed I have to change that uh minnesota i don't think i've seen anything tonight might see some severe weather again tomorrow or or into sunday so again if you want to check out the latest on those go ahead and watch our latest forecast you can find the latest details on that hey wilson how you doing welcome back
Thank you, Shane, by the way, for subscribing. I appreciate it. Welcome. All right, let's go back over to the velocities. I don't know if the velocities are going to be overly accurate at this point, since it is pretty far away from the radar site, and it's not showing much as of right now. This storm shows a little bit more of these brighter greens, which again represents that potential for at least damaging winds around 50 to 55 miles per hour. Could be as high as 60, though, as of right now. Again, that's east of Camargo, moving down to the south. Also got some other storms, again, as I mentioned before, down here to the south. These are all producing some gusty winds. Uh, again, they'll be moving down to the south over the next hour or two, going towards Burke Burnett, as well as... Uh, I don't even know how to say the name, but it's also going toward Comanche as well as Walters right now is actually getting hit with a pretty strong storm. This actually might get end up getting warned here in a little bit, but uh, near Walters, there's a bit of a strong storm here. That's just to the east of the Interstate 44. So that's what we got going as of right now. Hey, David, how you doing? And we got a special weather statement, so that kind of explains what was happening. So we do have a special weather statement, though, in this storm. That's for Walters and Temple that just got issued. Um, again, this storm's moving pretty much stationary right now. It might produce some locally heavy rain there for the next 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, again, this storm is producing some gusty winds up to 55 miles per hour and half-inch sized hail. Again, any of these storms that develop down here in the southern plains, again, main threat is going to be those gusty winds upwards of 50 to 55 miles per hour, possibly even a little bit higher because of the strong downburst winds that are initially going to happen with these storms. And again, we had an 83-mile-per-hour wind gust reported not even an hour ago over near Elk City, so we've had some pretty high winds. Uh, let's go back over here into the... Uh, Missouri area so this is just east of Missouri we actually have one in Illinois now of a severe thunderstorm warning this is near Carbondale and DeSoto as well as Royalton and Heron and Hearst this is producing the potential for damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour and as well as some nickel sized hail again that storm's moving off to the east southeast going towards areas like West Frankfurt uh, Heron as I mentioned before Marion's also in the track Pittsburgh possibly a little bit later on with this cell and again it's moving off to the east southeast this is again in southern Illinois on this storm so again, we have a lot of storms actually ongoing, and this is another one that we have. Uh, this is actually more activity than we saw last night at the same time. We have another storm actually that just got severe thunderstorm warned as well over south of Chattanooga. This is in extreme northwestern Georgia. Uh, this is near Ringgold, Indian Springs, Tunnel Hill, and Varnal, Vinar as well as uh, Jehota. Probably not saying that name right either. Uh, let's take a look at the, the ongoing reflectivity though. And uh, as of right now, definitely looks like a pretty severe storm here. This is producing, again, damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour and as well as the potential for maybe some quarter-sized hail. As of right now, velocity is definitely indicating some stronger winds, but uh, I'm not seeing a whole lot in terms of rotation. Again, not really any tornado threat over this direction, just primarily going to be damaging winds, maybe a little bit of quarter-sized hail. More storms as well right on the border of Tennessee and as well as Georgia. Again, those are all be moving down to the south and southeast over the next little while um and that's kind of what we got going as of right now again another cell over here i kind of forgot to mention this but we do have another cell also ongoing in extreme southeastern portions of missouri this is again right along areas of 67 this is producing some damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour and there's also a storm back out to the west of that near ironton that's also producing maybe some gusty winds um, up to about 55 miles per hour so that's what we got going on as well over here in missouri all right let's go back down over oklahoma and uh, take a look at some of these other storms as i mentioned before we got some severe storms ongoing over in oklahoma again a lot more to come from there over the next hour or two before it all kind of starts to fizzle out after daylight heating ends anything for south alabama mainly just rain uh, there could be a very isolated storm there in terms of maybe an isolated severe storm but overall it's going to stay fairly minimal i believe there was one warning ongoing in alabama i can't remember where it was but i think it was possibly in southern alabama Hey, pilot guy, how you doing? Welcome back. I'm way on the top of Illinois, so no excitement for me tonight. Yeah, it's not going to be much for you in Illinois. Thank you, uh, Gamer Pro, by the way, for the $2 super chat. I really do appreciate that. Uh, main tornado threat, it's very low tonight, but it is going to exist maybe in Kentucky with the overnight storms. And again, very low. I would only be concerned, again, about damaging winds. Just make sure you have a way to receive alerts tonight because, again, there could be possibly a very brief or weak tornado with the storm. It's a special weather statement for Des Moines. There was a funnel cloud up here. I don't know. I didn't see any rain up here in Des Moines. Again, this was reported at 613. That was only about 30 minutes ago, but there isn't really much here. I don't see any special weather statement. There might be, but it's not showing up on here. Yeah, so south of uh, Montgomery, by the way, that's the severe thunderstorm warning ongoing there. Uh, let me put on the whole radar here. There's actually another special weather statement at Lubbock. Let me put on the regular radar here, just kind of give you an idea of everything. Uh, this is a look at this storm, though, over here near Lubbock. This is producing some gusty winds of 55 miles per hour, and as well as half-inch size tail near Aberthany. Probably not saying that name right, but it's going toward New Deal, so it's going to be moving down to the south pretty slowly. Uh, again, the storm's moving apparently only one mile per hour to the south. I think it's moving a little bit faster than that, but that's what we got going as of right now. 
Is uh, South Alabama clear? Uh, no. Alabama might see some stuff, but overall, again, severe weather is going to be pretty low. Turn this off real quick. Yeah, if you're just tuning in for the first time, again, I would appreciate if you hit the like button down below. We are closing in on our uh, our goal of 9,500 subscribers as well. So if you haven't hit the subscribe button, again, I would appreciate that as well. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the chat. I don't do Canada uh, Manny yet, but I might in the future. Uh, Lisa, overall, I don't think much is happening there. Nothing severe at this point, though. Might be a couple of storms though later over the next couple of hours, but I don't think much is going on right now over there. Manny, I cannot. I don't have the ability to do that on here. Uh, Paul, uh, there's not going to be a tornado emergency, for example, tonight, but, um, yeah, I mean, maybe it kind of depends on when it is during the night. I'm usually up until like three. So um, I'm typically up for at least, you know, several hours after most people are anyways. So if there's ever anything ever like that, then yeah, definitely not really a question that I might. Uh, Manny, if you want to get Canada coverage, you're going to need to get like radar scope or something. That's like the only weather app that actually does that. On the northeast New Mexico, ever see rain again? Brian, I couldn't, I don't even know, honestly. It's been a pretty long time since really anywhere in the southwest has seen much rain. And by the way, this is probably the first time in at least several weeks that anyone in even southern Oklahoma or even north Texas has seen rain, especially to this magnitude, because it is pretty scattered right now, especially near Lawton. We're definitely seeing a pretty good amount of rain. And it's been several weeks. Again, I don't know if we've seen any rain in this area since possibly, I don't know, it's been a while. It's been at least a few weeks, though. Hey, you Unusual, how you doing? Welcome back. You're in Canada, you have a tornado watch? Yeah, again, I couldn't do anything about that, man. I apologize. I don't have any access to the Canada Raiders. All right, let's go back up here to the north. Again, we have a couple of severe storms ongoing. One south of Higgins. We might get a new severe thunderstorm warning over here for maybe some hail, and as well as possibly some damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour. Again, this is over in Crawford and Durham as of right now. And again, it's moving off. Possibly, it looks like it almost looks like it's going off to the west, unless, uh, unless that might be a new storm now. Uh, but again, obviously, the main threat tonight, again, in this area, anywhere in Oklahoma or Texas, will have the main threats for damaging winds, again, up to 70 miles per hour, and maybe some hail up to the size of half dollars. That's our main threats. Again, we've seen hail peak at half dollar size. We've also seen winds peak at 85 miles per hour so that's our peaks at this point we've already kind of gotten probably past the peak of the severe weather but uh that's what we got going as of right now and again that 83 mile per hour wind gust was at bessie so uh that was only not even an hour ago so we've seen some pretty significant severe weather how you doing virginia welcome back how you doing today hey aiden how you doing i gotta figure out my phone went I'm, I'm not gonna lie i really don't know where it went oh it might be wait one second Okay, I found it. I can find it, but it's like, where'd my phone go? I haven't had it this entire time. Okay, cool. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in chat. Um, here we go. We're only 13 likes, by the way, away from 100. If you haven't hit the like button again, I would have really appreciated it. Uh, we got a new severe thunderstorm warning over in Illinois. This is our second one now for damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour, and as well as the potential for some penny-sized hail. Again, that's moving off to the east, Woodlawn, Waltonville, Bonnie, as well as uh, Blueford, Mount Vernon, Dix, as well as, looks like that's actually about it for these areas. Uh, again, your Interstate 57 and 64. So again, new severe thunderstorm warning for this area, moving off to the east and east-northeast. Hey, j Dog, how you doing? Welcome back. Thanks, Gary. I appreciate it. I'm doing pretty good, Virginia. Thanks for asking. It's been pretty good so far. Thank you, Bill Dark, as well, for subscribing, guys. I do appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Nashville under extreme heat for tomorrow. Yeah, there's a, that's ongoing in Texas, too. It's a couple areas currently under that right now. All right, let's take a look. I don't think we have any new warnings down here. Uh, again, we got one going in South Georgia, South Alabama. The ones in North Carolina have expired. Virginia, again, maybe seeing some showers. Nothing too crazy. It looks like a weakening complex of storms right now. Again, another area of storms will develop off that direction, as I mentioned before. We have a warning on going over in New Mexico, by the way, near uh, Interstate 25. But other than that, pretty minimal activity over that direction. Let's go back over to this radar. Yeah, this is where we got some storm activity going as of right now. This is producing some gusty winds around 55 miles per hour. Again, all this shifting into northwestern North Texas over the next hour or two. So just keep that in mind. 
<laughs> well, no cola. It was 107. Really? Man, that's crazy. It's way too hot. Thank you, Pamelia, by the way, for subscribing. I appreciate it. Or Pamela. Hope I'm saying your name right. Appreciate you subscribing. Having a burger. Nice. I need food. I haven't had dinner. We'll be in Northwest Arkansas for two weeks. Will they get rain? Uh, I would expect they'll get rain at some point, but. Tornado warning in Canada. Again, I can't do Canada uh, severe weather. I just don't have access to it. At least on this. Yeah, that's way up. I mean, I could possibly if it was close to the border, but it's way up in Canada. Yeah, there is a tornado warning up there. Yeah, Storm has a pretty pronounced hook, too. Wish I could show it. Thank you, Jane, for the $5 super chat. Sorry to hear that. Um, southeast side of Marion County, which, oh, Indianapolis, okay. Uh, let me take a look for you. So he said near Illinois, or Indianapolis. It looks like overall severe weather or any storms in general will likely stay to your south. So uh, maybe a brief passing shower or storm, probably week, maybe between like nine or 10 o'clock maybe tonight, but it's gonna be very, very minimal. I think only rain is expected if you see anything, but overall very isolated. I do appreciate again your $5 super chat and I hope everything gets better soon. Hey Mason, how you doing? Welcome. Eating cereal, nice. Cereal doesn't sound bad. Thanks, Jane. I appreciate it. Yeah, I th hope everything gets better for you soon. Yeah, Jeff, I know, but I don't have radar scope on my computer. It costs like 30 bucks. I don't have that much money to spend on radar scope. I already have it on my phone. Thanks, Mason. I appreciate it. Hey, how you doing, Frankie? Welcome back from Florida. Hope you're doing well. No problem, Jane. <laughs> um that was pennsylvania uh in terms of storms right now there's not i don't think there's anything going on up there and i don't think you'll see much for the next few days anyways the next chance for rain out anywhere up in the northeast i know like at the bare minimum will be monday so it'll be at least a few more days until you see anything we actually have a tornado possible label by the way on this storm over here in oklahoma i didn't even realize this oops um we have a tornado possible label on this I believe it's been like that possibly for a while. Let me take a look at the velocities here over the last little bit. And let me turn off the radar behind it. Again, tornado was po actually a tornado possible label on the storm. We're looking at the south radar, so red meaning wind's going that way. Okay, so um, maybe this? That might have been actually what we're looking at. The, obviously strong winds there, but there might have been a little bit of trying to have a little bit of rotation there northwest of putnam earlier in the storm looks like that's fizzled out though that's interesting i didn't even know that there was actually a tornado possible label though in the storm the software's crashed for the third time in the stream that is insane all right let me go back over to let's go over here thank you sarah for the 20 dollar super chat i really do appreciate that oh my god that's a lot Use this for the radar scope. I appreciate it. Thank you. My radar app is amazing. I've never, I've only used my radar on um, mobile before. Thank you, Sarah. Again, I really do appreciate your support. Thank you. Sarah is a baller. That is true. I don't spend money on radar apps. I just use my radar. Yeah, that's kind of what most people, most people don't spend money on radar apps. Unless you're really into weather. All right, let me turn back on the radar. We got a couple of warnings on going up here. Let me go back over to the reflectivity. And near Lee Day, as of right now, we have an ongoing severe storm again, southwest of Camargo. That is still probably producing damaging winds around 60 miles per hour and as well as possibly some penny sized hail. Also got a storm back off to the northwest of that, as I mentioned before, also possibly producing the same threats right now, half dollar potentially size tail as well as damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour again that's south right now of higgins so those are the two severe thunderstorm warnings we got going as of right now in oklahoma again we have storms on going down here near lawton as well as chattanooga going down to the south as i mentioned before these might produce some gusty winds as they move down to the south and back off here to the northeast again we had actually a new warning we have a bunch of warnings right now over here in illinois this is now our third one Thanks, Sarah, again for the $10 super chat. I really do appreciate that. Yes, YouTube does take some from it, but I do appreciate it. 
Yeah, that's why I encourage people, if you ever want to donate, always use the donation link uh, down in the description, but you can do either one. It's not a big deal. But yeah, YouTube does take a little cut. Right, and this is actually a new severe thunderstorm warning back up near Olney, and this is moving down to the southeast. It's producing damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour and quarter size tail going toward Claremont, and uh, it'll be moving down to the southeast toward 50, and as well as going near 130 as of right now. So definitely something to watch. Again, it's moving down to the southeast as of right now. Weather Underground's not bad either. I have Venmo, but I don't have Cash App. Nah, that's fine, sir. It's not a big deal. I appreciate it, though. I really do appreciate your support. This is another storm also near Woodland, uh, or Woodlawn, excuse me, as well as Mount Vernon in Blueford. Again, this is producing damaging winds around 60 miles per hour and as well as penny-sized hail. So that's moving off to the east. Hey, thanks, Matthew. I appreciate it. Also, this is another severe thunderstorm warning again near West Frankfurt. This also has been warned for at least about 10 to 15 minutes now. This is also moving off to the east. Again, this is producing the potential for some damaging winds to 60 miles per hour and nickel-sized hail. Again, moving off to the east as of right now. And the latest update is now down to penny-sized hail, so just got updated. Freeman Spur is currently kind of in the vicinity for that storm as well. We're like 20 subscribers, by the way, away from... I don't know what the, the most accurate sub count is, but uh, we are 20 away from either 9,400 or 9,500. So, again, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, I would appreciate it. Yeah, that's our ongoing severe weather. Again, over here in the uh, Illinois area, we got some more severe weather. We got brand new warnings up in northern Georgia. Again, we've had a lot of warnings being issued here over the last little bit. Most of them, again, are fairly marginal risks overall. We got damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour and, again, quarter-sized hail uh, to the northwest of Dalton. And we also got that ongoing over here. That's east of Blue Ridge and Mineral Bluff, and as well as Hemp as well as Ivy Log, Loving, and Jones Creek are all included in this warning, again, for damaging winds to 60 miles per hour, and as well as quarter-sized hail. And Sarah, again, with another $5. This time it's a super sticker, I think it is. I appreciate that, Sarah. Thank you. There's 35 super dollar chats so far. Appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Really, really do appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, uh, PayPal, I'm not going to go over the story with it, but there was, I, I had a video on it. it it's not going to go over the story, but yeah, PayPal, I'm never going to use again. Thank you. Uh, stay humbled, by the way, for subscribing. I appreciate it. This is another severe thunderstorm warning ongoing, by the way. This is over in, I think this was Alabama, right? Yeah, this is Alabama. This is west of Troy. This is producing damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour as well. Again, ongoing for areas near Highland Home and Petrie. Those areas included there. And again, another storm ongoing over here in Georgia. And this is moving down to the south. Again, producing damaging winds upwards of 60 miles per hour. And nickel sized hail. Vada, Hoggard Mill, Branchville, Hopeful, and Harold Still are all included in this warning here. That's moving again down to the south. Let me zoom back out here. Again, we got some warnings on going. I'm going to go back over here to Oklahoma. And I kind of give an idea of what's going on here again. That's most of the severe weather again. We actually got a new warning now. But uh, this is, again, the actually, this is a new severe thunderstorm warning. So this is for western Oklahoma. This is producing damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour. And as well as quarter-sized tail, that's for Arnett, Lee Day, as well as Crawford, Durham, and as well as Angora. So those areas included. Again, this is going to be going until 745 Central Time. So the storm is at this point right now, moving off to the west. So those in the track of the storm, again, make sure you're staying away from windows, bring your car into your garage, take those proper precautions. Again, damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour, and as well as that potential for quarter-sized tail exists with this storm. A warning southeast of Denver. Oh, yeah, there's actually storms over here in Denver, too. I didn't even realize this. We got a bunch of warnings over here in Denver. Uh, let's hop over to a few of these. This is uh, southwest of Fountain. This is producing half dollar sized hail and damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour. This is near Penrose and Cannon City. That's also moving down to the southwest. It shows actually a little bit of rotation here on the estimated by radar. Maybe a little bit of broad rotation, but overall main threats most likely going to be half dollar sized hail there. Uh, a couple other warnings as well. There's one storm ongoing near the Evergreen area. This is west of Denver near Blue Valley and Floyd Hill, producing damaging, or not damaging winds, but quarter-sized hail. The quarter-sized hail threat's probably going to be right here, by the way. So that's just west of Evergreen as of right now. Also over here near Parker, this is producing some quarter-sized hail as well. Not really a threat with damaging winds on that cell. And we also got a couple others as well in eastern Colorado. These are actually producing slightly higher threats. This one was ping pong ball size tail. Looks to be lesser now, but uh, it is producing possibly some downburst winds up to 60 miles per hour. And again, those are moving down to the south as of right now.
So that's what we got going as of right now in these areas. And uh, we'll primarily be focusing on anywhere in the Southern Plains, anywhere in the East as well. We're not gonna really look at Montana, as I mentioned before. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the chat as well. Let me go back over to this radar site over in Amarillo. Yeah, this storm is pretty pronounced right now. We definitely got a lot of hail with this storm. Again, this is northwest of Lide, or Lidi. And that's, again, moving off to the west in western Oklahoma going towards 283. So that's what we're looking at as of right now. Again, very potent storm overall. Let me go and see if we have a uh, live cam. Or if we have anything over in this direction. Take a look. So this is up again near Lide, Camargo. This is near, this is North Venner State 40. Doesn't look like we have anything in this area. As of now. Yeah, we don't have anything over this area, unfortunately. Notice an airport weather warning in Oklahoma City. What is that? I actually don't exactly know. Uh, it might be for like, it's probably meant for pilots i would assume if there was like you know downburst winds or anything like that maybe a severe thunderstorm warning maybe there's also along with that some sort of airport weather warning or something like that that's probably because of that i've actually never heard of that before I, surprisingly i actually know most warnings and i didn't know that was actually a warning but it's probably for pilots that's why i probably haven't heard of it hey colton how you doing welcome back Doing good, Colton. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. Doing pretty good. All right, let me go back over here. Let's see if we have any new mesocyclone discussions. Again, no severe thunderstorm watch is ongoing other than Montana. We might see one get issued for Illinois. It's to be determined. We'll see. By the way, if you're new here, again, we're only 10 subscribers away from either 9,400 or 9,500. So if you haven't hit the subscribe button, again, we only need 10 more to subscribe. I would appreciate it. Uh, we got some storm activity now starting to enter, it looks like, into areas down here near the Red River. Also going to Texas. Again, these storms could produce some gusty winds upwards of 55 miles per hour and maybe some low-end chances for severe weather as well. Again, outflow boundary very well defined on radar, by the way. We got a very well defined outflow boundary. That's likely producing some gusty winds around 55 miles per hour. It's currently going through Burke Burnett, Electra, and it will eventually go through Wichita Falls. Again, this is now just to the south of Vernon. So this will also be an area to watch. And as I mentioned before, a little strong storm, maybe some hail, as well as maybe some gusty winds. And it got warned. So <laughs> I drink a lot of storms. But this is a new severe thunderstorm warning for Comanche, Duncan, as well as Temple and Empire City and Hugh. Hulan, Len, I'm not going to say the name right, but uh, damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour, and as well as some quarter sized hail as possible with this storm. And again, that's moving currently very stationary, but it is currently moving a little bit off, it seems like, to the west. So that's what we got going as right now with this storm. Again, warning just got issued again in southern Oklahoma. Latest severe thunderstorm warning there. Thank you, Jeff, as well as Try and Scarlet for subscribing. I appreciate it, guys. Welcome. Thank you, weather. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think that, yeah, airport warnings make sense. Now you're not late. Random. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, my first downburst in Oklahoma City. There was some very strong downburst up in Oklahoma City. It was up to 72 miles per hour um, from the reports that we had. We also had an 83 mile per hour report over in Bessie, Oklahoma, which is uh, just south of Interstate 40. So we've had some pretty significant winds as well, not just, you know, the overall little bit of hail that we've seen, but we've also seen some very significant damaging winds. Yeah, I don't know what your sub count's accurate on my page. It says it's up to 9,497. So yeah, we only need three more people to subscribe apparently for us to hit 9,500, but it also might be delayed or cut back. I don't know. Uh, J Dog, it's technically category one winds. Now, if you were to compare a 83 mile per hour wind gust to a hurricane, it's technically going to be um, category one. Excuse me. Yeah, category one. Air quality alert and heat advisory. Yeah, this heat again has been brutal. I'm really open for some sort of relief. Again, when will that come? We just don't really have much of any answer. There might be something next Wednesday. But the chances, again, are fairly, it looks like, minimal right now. 
in terms of seeing any significant cooldowns. Thank you, Larry, for the $15 donation. I really do appreciate that, Larry. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. Uh, let me take a look at your message. I don't know if you sent one. I'm not signed into my thing. Really do appreciate that, though. Again, if you're just tuning in, ongoing storm, this is again in southern Oklahoma. Again, if you have any questions about the other storms, feel free to put those in the chat as well. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate that. Keep up the great work. I enjoy watching, and you're from Longview. Nice. Appreciate, or Long Valley, excuse me. Appreciate that. Again, really do appreciate your very generous tip. Thank you. Your generous donation. No problem, Kim. For Castle Rock, uh, Colorado? Okay, I'll take a look in here a second. Cool down? Yes, October. Yeah, literally. Hey, Brandon, how you doing? Welcome back. Okay, let me go back over to the storms up here in Colorado. Apparently, we got a new warning up here. We've had some severe weather ongoing up here as well. Uh, this is one near Parker. Is this the one that you're talking about? It was one near Castle Rock, I think you said. Uh, but this is the one for quarter-sized hail, and there's definitely some large hail with this. Let me take a look at the hail radar. Take a look what we got going here with this storm again, just east of Parker. And it looks like, yeah, as of right now, we got some hail going with the storm. Nothing significant, but we probably have it that it's peaked around nickel size in terms of an estimate. It does look a little bit larger, though, here on radar. Could be maybe a little bit larger, but uh, overall, let's take a look at the correlation coefficient. Sometimes if we kind of see some specs here, we actually might be able to see if there's any hail. And uh, there actually probably is a decent amount of hail here. There might be actually a lot of hail falling, but it might not be that large. So we got going as of right now. Again, that's near Parker. Got a little storm off to the northwest of Denver as well. Uh, news, this is a new severe thunderstorm morning, I think. Yeah, it just got issued uh, for those over in Anton and as well as a Rick Array School, maybe. I don't know if I'm saying the name right, but that's also producing ping pong ball size tail and as well as damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour. That's also moving down to the south toward 36 and it's also near 63. So definitely something to watch pretty closely for. Hey, uh, Reaper, how you doing? I'll take a look at North Carolina here in a second. I don't think there's much, though. Yeah, Montana's been getting a load of uh, storms recently. And uh, definitely a lot of storms over that direction. Here, uh, here's a storm over near Cannon City and Penrose, by the way. This one's producing half-dollar size tail and as well as damaging winds around 60 miles per hour. Again, that storm's moving down to the southwest. That's west of Interstate 25. That's the main uh, severe weather that we got going as of right now over in that direction. Again, we got stuff going on over in Oklahoma. I'll get to that in a moment. Let's go back up here over to, uh, let's see. We'll go over here to first to the Illinois area. Take a look at these warnings. We haven't looked at this in a little bit. Hey, Mud Duck, how you doing? Welcome back. Welcome back, Christian. Thank you, Brian, uh, Don, as well as Dima for subscribing. I appreciate it, guys. All right, here's a look at the new severe thunderstorm warnings. Uh, we actually had a report, by the way, of 48 mile per hour wind gusts over in De DeSoto or DeSoto. Uh, that's in Jackson County, Illinois. So this storm, again, is warned for up to 60 mile per hour wind gusts. I'm not, again, that was reported. It was 48, so it might be a little bit lower than that, but uh, it's not a whole lot of bright greens. We got a little bit near Pittsburgh, but overall, the uh, wind gust report was where that storm uh, obviously was going through. This is another warning again up here in Mount Vernon now. It's going through Blueford next. Bonnie's also being hit by it. Again, this storm's producing damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour. And uh, that'll be moving off to the east only as well. Also seeing some damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour and quarter size tail. Again, that's going toward Claremont as well as Cahoon and uh, Sumner. Those areas will be in the track in the next several minutes. And Hammernado with also the $10 Super Chat. Man, you guys are going crazy tonight with Super Chats. I think this is probably the most Super Chats I've had in a long time. I appreciate you guys. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Hammernado. Appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Again, Larry, I do really appreciate that uh, $15 tip again. St. Louis. Oh, the St. Louis Arc Glass. Has, I have no clue. I have literally no clue. <laughs> it's like physically impossible. Uh, Reaper, I recommend something like Radar Scope or My Radar. All right, let me go back down over here to the south. We actually got some storms going through St. Louis right now. I didn't realize this. We actually got a pretty strong storm, it looks like, over near St. Louis right now. Possibly a little bit of hail as well with the storm. Let me take a look at the hail radar and uh, see what we got going there. Thank you, Alan, by the way, for subscribing. Uh, this is a look at the velocities as of right now. Currently around maybe 40 miles per hour. 
Let's go over to the hail radar, though. Let's take a look if there's any hail falling in St. Louis. Is anybody in the stream from St. Louis right now? This is actually going right into the downtown area of St. Louis. Looks like maybe some pea-sized hail. Possibly up to half inch. And that's near University City in Pine Lawn. That's kind of our update there. Cardinals game is delayed? Okay. Yeah, that would make sense. Uh, Christian, if you want to check out our latest seven-day forecast, you can go to our website, ntxweathercenter.com. That is for North Texas. In the my writer app, you wish you could pause it. Yeah, I, do, I agree with that, Zach. I definitely agree with that. All right, let's go uh, back down here to the southeast. I know somebody was asking about North Carolina. No clue if you're still here, but we have a couple of storms over. Uh, it looks like in southern North Carolina, this one's producing some gusty winds. Let me put them back on this right over here. Uh, but this is producing some gusty winds around 30 miles per hour. Otherwise, most of these might just be producing some gusty winds. Nothing severe, though, in North Carolina. Uh, we have some storms, though, back out here to the west. Again, these are producing some gusty winds up to 50 miles per hour for Dalton now. And there's also this severe thunderstorm warning ongoing over here near uh, Young Hair. It's just to the west of there. So uh, this currently includes Blairsville as well as Hemp, Ivy, Log, Loving, and Jones Creek. That's moving down to the southeast again. A couple of storms ongoing in that direction. And uh, we also got a couple of storms also ongoing. One over here in southern Georgia. This is also producing some damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour and nickel-sized hail. And uh, that will be moving down to the south again. Going to most likely actually going to Florida, possibly towards Tallahassee, Madison, and Jasper. That's a little cluster of storms there. We also got one again east of Greenville. This is producing some damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour. Hey, Michael, how you doing? Welcome back. Hey, Cody, how you doing? Welcome back. Thank you, Michael, for subscribing, by the way. I appreciate it. Uh, Elkhart up here. Are you talking about Elkhart and in, uh, Indiana, you said, right? Uh, Elkhart won't see much. If anything, you might see a passing shower, but no severe weather. Sounds good, Moxie. Uh, yes, unusual. I, I think it already has moved. It's not, it's not moving. It, it already has definitely. It's been, I think, honestly, the, uh, the Dixie Alley is really, it should be named Tornado Alley, in my opinion. But there's obviously, you know, there's a tornado threat, obviously, across the central and southern plains and whatnot across, you know, those areas during the the springtime and whatnot. But I think the overall threat has been the highest, especially over the last 30 years in areas like, you know, the Dixie Alley area. We do have a new severe thunderstorm warning, by the way. This is for Pittsburgh, Marion. Again, this is moving off to the east, going towards possibly Harrisburg as well. It's a bit more of a populated area. Uh, this is producing some damaging winds, though, up to 60 miles per hour. I'll be moving off to the east. And a new, brand new warning there. All right, we have a, uh, this warning's already been ongoing. Let's go over here to Oklahoma again. Again, these storms have been pretty pronounced as well. Problem done, appreciate you tuning in. Here's the other, uh, other severe thunderstorm warning again, ongoing. This is over in um, Empire City at uh, Comanche. This storm's producing damaging winds around 60 miles per hour, and it's also producing some quarter-sized hail. Uh, again, this storm is currently really just stationary, but this is a storm, again, we'll have these storms continuing to develop along the south flow boundary, and again, these storms could potentially pose that threat for some strong downburst winds around 60 miles per hour over the next hour and a half. Now you're in southern Oklahoma or even northern Texas. Uh, that's kind of what we're looking at in terms of those threats as of right now. We also got another severe thunderstorm warning up here in western portions of Oklahoma. This is near Arnett, Leedy, as well as Crawford, Durham, as well as Angora. Those areas are currently seeing damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour. And again, possibly some quarter size hail as well. Look at the projected high temperatures in Oklahoma for the next couple of weeks. Oklahoma City. Let's take a look. Yeah, forecasted highs getting to the low 100s looks like next week. Um, talking about like the computer models. Computer models, honestly, if you're looking at the GFS model, for example, it has just been out of whack this year. It was showing this big heat wave yesterday and now it's not showing it at all anymore, anymore today. Yeah, the GFS model, for example, brings Oklahoma City net on July 17th to 106. I mean, in my opinion, it's just... 110 next Wednesday too. It's not it's not impossible, but like 
don't know. The GFS model is just not, in my opinion, being that good this year. It's been very, very off, especially with the tropics. Um, looking at the same time frame on the European model, it shows, you know, low 100s, for example. So, yeah, I don't know. You never know. Yeah, it's going to be hot. It's going to be a hot summer, as I said before. Uh, yes, Brian, I do on uh, our Facebook page. If you're in Texas, you can check that out. Uh, the link's in the description below if you're on Facebook. We also have Instagram. We post those warnings on those pages. Those are specifically for North Texas and really anywhere in Texas. Uh, thank you, Weather, as well as Toby for subscribing. I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, computer models are crazy. The, again, the GFS model's been out of whack. It's, it's not been, in my opinion, that accurate this year. All right, again, this is the ongoing storm in western portions of Oklahoma. Again, we got plenty of severe storms. They're very widely separated from themselves, honestly, though, overall. We have now a heavy rain area now to watch, possibly a flash flood watch in eastern North Carolina and really across northern North, South Carolina as well. So definitely some new warnings there. Uh, somebody was asking about New Jersey. Nothing expected there tonight. We have some storms over in Wyoming as of right now. Again, over here in Colorado, we got a few severe th thunderstorms ongoing. Again, most of them are producing primarily damaging winds around 60 miles per hour and maybe some quarter-sized hail. That's what we got going as right now, again, near uh, Penrose and as well as going toward Cannon City. Again, that storm's moving down to the southwest. We also got a storm over here near Parker that's producing some quarter-sized hail. And uh, also, we got another storm over here in basically the middle of nowhere. This is near Anton as well as a Hickory School. I'm probably not saying the name right, but that's also producing ping-pong ball-sized hail and damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour. NAM is being really weird too. About what? The NAM mall has always been kind of weird in my opinion. I'm glad you found it, dog. Glad you found it. Yeah, Texas has been hot. And it's been hot all summer. It's not been just one day. Let me go to the velocities on the storm real quick. I kind of want to look at this. Uh, no, dog. No, nothing tornadic. There might be an isolated tornado later tonight, but it won't probably be when I'm live. This storm's had, again, mostly just winds. There's been a little bit of broad rotation at one point. It was actually warned as a tornado possible storm at one point, but I do believe that overall threat is going down now. Uh, let me go back over to the reflectivity. Nope, oh, that's not reflectivity. There we go. It's Friday? I know, it's hard to believe. All right, uh, let's go and take it again. I'm going to take a look real quick. There is a tornado warning up in Canada. Again, I can't cover that, but. Yeah, I, I wish I could cover it. If, if it was closer to the uh, the United States and Canada border, I might be able to cover it, but I just don't have access to the radar sites up that way. Yeah, Kentucky is really the only chance where there might be an isolated tornado overnight tonight. But again, it would be a pretty low-end risk overall. Main threat against damaging winds really anywhere for severe weather tonight. It's kind of what's expected. Yeah, this is a storm over in western Oklahoma. It's again producing quarter-sized hail, damaging winds around 60 miles per hour. Let me go over to the hail radar, take a look at what we got um, showing up on that. Look if we got any significant hail while I'm going with this or not. And uh, actually, it's starting to go a little bit higher, it looks like. On the latest scans, it's up possibly as high as golf ball size. Let me take a look if we have any updates on this. And it's actually up to 70 miles per hour uh, in terms of damaging winds as well as half dollar size tail. So a new update on this storm, it's no longer 60 miles per hour. It's up to 70. And it is also producing half dollar size tail and no longer quarter. That's kind of the cap at this point on this storm. So uh, just an update again for those in this area near Lide as well as west of Camargo. Again, those areas include our Arnett, Crawford, Durham, as well as Angora. So again, damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour, and as well as that potential for maybe some half dollar size tail exists, exists with this storm. Uh, let me go to my Twitter. Somebody asked, I'm gonna take a look. And again, if you're just tuning in for the first time, I would again appreciate if you hit the like button down below. Make sure to subscribe again if you're new here. We are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Um, I don't see anything on Twitter. You tweeted at me. Hey, Rebecca, how you doing? Welcome back. Okay, let me look. Oh, oh, okay. Let me look on your Twitter. I 
Again, this storm is over in western Oklahoma. Again, we got some storms in southwestern Oklahoma as well. Uh, I don't see anything on your Twitter either, unless I'm looking at the wrong Twitter. Again, no new mesocycle or mesoscale discussions as of now. I keep saying mesocycling. I gotta get that on my head. Hey, Defender, how you doing? Welcome back. How you doing, Rebecca? All right, this is again the storm in western Oklahoma. Again, we got a storm southeast of Lawton. This is the one that's also severe thunderstorm warning, quarter sized hail, and as well as damaging winds around 60 miles per hour is also possible. And uh, that's what we got going on right now. Uh, no new warnings, by the way, over in Illinois as of right now. Again, we'll keep a close eye on that. A lot of strong storms over that direction. A couple severe thunderstorm warnings. Also, have potentially some high damaging winds with a storm near Pittsburgh. That's also in Illinois. Uh, Christian, I wasn't really planning on going live today. Again, this live stream will last probably about an hour or two. I'm not, this is not going to be a very long live stream, most likely, unless we get some pretty significant developments over this direction. Which there actually has been a decent amount of developments over here in uh, Illinois so far. Again, this is an area that will have more severe weather tonight. Um, again, tornado threat does exist. It's going to be pretty low, but we do have an isolated tornado threat. Damaging winds being the main concern, and as well as maybe some quarter to half dollar sized hail. This is a storm, for example, over Marion that's producing some damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour, and maybe a little bit of hail also off to the north of that. This is producing some damaging winds around 60, and the one up here as well near Olney is also producing some damaging winds around 60 miles per hour near Claremont as well. So that's what we got going as right now. Nothing in Fletcher, Rebecca. Where is where is Fletcher again? Let me let me look that up. I, I I've heard of it. I can't remember where it was though. Oh, that's northeast of Lawton. You haven't seen anything really? I'm surprised. Okay, let me look that up. I'm really surprised you have not seen anything though. I mean, like honestly, there's been a lot of storm activity that's gone through that area. Oh, okay, I see it now. Yeah, I, I saw that. I don't know if it's on the ground, but that is a pretty impressive looking hook uh, up in Canada. It is pretty impressive. Not a drop, really. That is really surprising to me. Let me go back over to Oklahoma. They actually have a special weather statement over in eastern Oklahoma now. There's been a lot. Of, I mean, there's a lot of storms over here. You haven't seen a drop of rain. There's some showers here near uh, Cyril and it's all Sterling raining in uh, south of Lawton. Yeah, there's no tornado in Illinois. Yeah, uh, Olaf, there's a possibility that we see some sort of tornado threat on Sunday. Again, it, it, there's a lot of factors with it right now that are still to be determined because um, there will be a strong low-level jet most likely. Just the question is, when will the storms happen? How will it set up and whatnot? Because if we see a line of storms during the morning, which is currently forecasted that there'll be a line of storms weakening as it comes out of uh, out of the North Dakota area going into early Sunday morning, that could limit the overall severe, severity of storms during the afternoon hours. That could lower the tornado threat, could lower all threats of severe weather. So there is still a lot of question marks in terms of Minnesota on Sunday. That is why I'm not trying to say that there's going to be a, a huge tornado outbreak, but there's a possibility for it. That's why I keep mentioning it in my forecast, because there is definitely a possibility that there could be something. It's just going to really depend on what happens during the morning hours. It's still forecasted with at least the latest computer model run that there will be a line of showers and maybe some storms on Sunday morning. If, again, that happens, the overall tornado threat will be lower, even though we still have a low-level jet that's going to be pretty strong. Um, let me take a look at the NAM model as well. Yeah, for example, the NAM 3K model delays that line of storms till the afternoon, and it shows maybe that potential for maybe possibly, you know, a, you know, a tornado or two. So, yeah, it, it's really, it's, it's, it's a big question mark still. The low-level jet, as I mentioned before, will be pretty strong, um, which is definitely going to fuel up maybe a tornado threat, but, yeah, it's really going to depend on what happens in the morning. Let me take a look at the low-level jet again. Yeah, the low-level jet during, like, you know, the 
afternoon hour is going to reach about 30 to 40 knots it's actually a little bit weaker than previously forecasted so again it very well that threat might go slightly further down which would again be pretty good news uh overall hey i uh, thank you all Olaf, by the way for becoming a storm chaser member i really do appreciate that thank you be becoming a member enjoy your benefits as well and again if you're on disc or on discord server uh you can get a roll on there as well thank you brian as well as fleet by the way for subscribing i appreciate it guys welcome All right. Yeah, this is the storm over in southern Oklahoma as of right now. We also got one again over here in western Oklahoma. This one again is up to damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour. It's no longer 60, and it is also up to half dollar size tail. It is no longer quarter. But uh, you can see the brighter greens. That's representing again your higher wind gusts right now. Again, just to the northwest of Leedy, west of Camargo, and again it's moving off to the west northwest. Again, this storm is not moving south or east. It is going west. Arnett is going to be on the track of this storm as well. Well, the uh, Illinois storms continue into Indiana. Yes, they will, D. They will move into southern portions of Indiana. Sorry, I missed that. Might have missed a few questions. Um, again, we have an outflow boundary, by the way, currently going through portions of Wichita Falls, Vernon, and Burke Burnett. Again, this is moving all down to the south and southeast. And again, storms will be possible throughout portions of North Texas over the next couple of hours until that starts to kind of fizzle out a little bit more as it moves down to the south. So uh, definitely something to watch, though. We definitely got some ongoing activity there. We also got a new warning over in Colorado. Let's go hop over to that. We also got one up in Wyoming, apparently. Uh, we won't really look at that too much. But this is an ongoing warning over in... Uh, this is close to Thurman. So this is currently producing the potential for some damaging winds to 60 miles per hour in ping pong ball size tail. And I'm going to let you know right now, that looks a lot larger than ping pong ball size tail. Uh, we possibly could be as high as hen egg, maybe even up to tennis ball size tail with this storm. That is a, a very significant hail core that we have here. Hey, Jonathan, how you doing? Yeah, Southwest really needs rain. I know it. Anywhere in the South needs rain. Yeah, no new meso mesoscale discussions, by the way. Still waiting on maybe if we had a new one. No problem, D. Yeah, again, this hail, let me go to the uh, hail radar because we might get an estimate of what it's showing there. But this looks a lot larger than ping pong ball size hail. Looks like a pretty significant hail core to me. All right, let's see. Yeah, I mean, estimated by radar, it's possibly as high as golf ball, maybe even head egg sized. It is uh, pretty high in terms of hailstones. Now, the warning was issued two minutes ago, but it might have been prior to when the storm may have increased in hail. Yeah, that's a, a pretty significant supercell here. Uh, and on this, or and hopefully I'm saying the name right, but that's over. This is currently in eastern Colorado. I agree with that, Shelly. I wish, I really wish we got rain over there, especially in northern California. They really need it. Yeah, Jonathan, nothing in uh, Wisconsin right now. Thank you, Stars and Brady, by the way, for subscribing. I appreciate it, guys. Welcome. Thank you. Look at the velocities, too. Curious if we have any rotation on this. Mainly just strong winds right now. 30 to 35 miles per hour. It shows on radar. Could very well be a little bit higher than that, though. Pretty impressive storm, though. Not going to lie. Pretty impressive. Uh, let me go back over to Illinois real quick. Again, we've had actually have a new severe thunderstorm warning. This is for damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour. And again, penny size tail. This does include uh, areas near Harrisonburg, or Her excuse me, Harrisburg, as well as Raleigh, El Dorado, and as well as Galatia, maybe I'm saying the name right, as well as Carrier Mills, kind of on the northern end of there. This is producing, again, damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour and penny size tail. Moving again off to the east. Which storm has the biggest threat of doing damage currently? Um, honestly, all of them are pretty much around the same threat level. But if I were to say like the most specific storm, it's probably that one in western Oklahoma. It's producing some damaging winds to get around 60 or 70, excuse me, miles per hour. And uh, we have a special weather statement as well that just got issued. That does include, uh, I can't read the name, but that does include that town right there. Uh, Broughton, west of Enfield and Springerton or Springertown. Springerton, yeah, it's Springerton. And uh, also, so your thunderstorm warning about to expire up here. That will not, likely not be reissued for Wayne City. It looks like maybe just some rain going through that area. Got a strong storm near Mount Carmel. 
or Cam Car Carmel, maybe? I don't know. I'm butchering a lot of names. So that's also included in that uh, potential for maybe a strong storm. And again, this is the other warning near Olney and Claremont. This might get a new warning. So I'll uh, we'll stay tuned on this one as well. This again, moving down to the southeast, damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour, as well as maybe some quarter sized hail. Still got some strong downburst winds here near uh, Olney as of right now. So definitely possible that we see a new warning. It's a low threat tonight for uh, Atlanta, Georgia to have any severe weather. Uh, JJ, possibly Monday or Tuesday. Stay tuned. I'll keep you updated. Uh, and on, I, I, I recommend something like Radar Scope or My Radar. So, yeah, that's again a pretty strong downburst wind area. Again, moving down to the southeast. It's near Alney. Might get a new warning. Keep it on here for a second. Uh, in the meantime, let me take a look at the Wyoming storm, see if you have any concerns on that one. Wyoming Storm just seems to be a pretty much a regular supercell there. The uh, storm over in a couple of them in Colorado are again severe. Rotation's pretty minimal though. That's what we got going on right now over there as well. All right, well, we don't have a new warning on that storm yet. We'll keep you updated with the latest on that. And uh, otherwise, no severe thunderstorm warnings remaining in the southeast, which is good news. Again, we got some severe weather still ongoing in Oklahoma. And we do have a sp new special weather statement that does extend into Wichita Falls for gusty winds up to 50 miles per hour. And as well as the potential for maybe a little bit of pea-sized tail. That does include Temple, Petrolia, the Be Belmont, as well as Byers, Dean, Randlett, Devil, or Devol, Hastings, Loco, Ratliff City, as well as Addington. These are a lot of crazy names. Uh, Shepard as well. Those areas are included in this ongoing new special weather statement. Again, gusty winds up to 50 miles per hour will be possible. Uh, let me take a quick screenshot of this. Yeah, let's move down to the south as of right now. We also got another storm again over near Comanche and Empire City. That is still severe, still producing maybe some strong downburst winds of 60 miles per hour. Yeah, if you have any questions about any of the severe weather ongoing, you can always leave those again in the chat. It's a very interactive live stream. And again, if you're new here, I would appreciate it again if you hit the subscribe button down below. We are closing in on 10,000 subscribers, and I would appreciate it again if you are uh, new here to hit the like button. Let's help our page out a lot. Yeah, one second. Just trying to make a weather report here on our other Facebook page, by the way. We, we had run North Texas Weather Center, as you know, so I have to post something on there real quick. All right, back to the jet. So yeah, that's again, damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour. This warning just got updated to ping pong ball size tail now, and as well as damaging winds around 70 miles per hour. Uh, this one again is over near Arnett, Crawford, as well as Durham and Angora. So uh, again, this warning just got a little bit upgraded up to now damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour and ping pong ball size tail. Uh, the storm's going to stay west of I-35 in Oklahoma and Texas. Not necessarily, Oki. They will be crossing over a little bit, primarily maybe over here near Ardmore. But overall, if you're down here like near Denton or something like that, it's a pretty low chance that you'll see much if you're on the east side of it. Overall, most of the activity, though, will stay off to the west of I-35. The storm's been impressive, by the way. Still producing damaging winds around 70 miles per hour. And again, ping pong ball size tail. This has been a pretty impressive sell here. It's actually a little bit of a uh, very weak rotation here as well. Still a storm to watch pretty closely. It's not even just producing severe weather, but it also has a little bit of rotation. I have no clue what that means, Jonathan. 
uh is wisconsin gonna get severe weather on sunday i don't know where that is in wisconsin but if you're in like western or northwestern areas of wisconsin or even maybe i think maybe even central is now included in it um you have a low end chance maybe of severe weather overall it's primarily northwestern areas though but main threats will probably be damaging winds and maybe a very isolated tornado Again, a lot of questions still remain for Sunday's event. So, uh, again, it could potentially be a severe weather or tornado outbreak, or it might just be an ordinary severe weather day like we've seen previously in the last several days. So, again, a lot of questions. Keep you updated again here on Max Velocity with the latest on that. Uh, okay, it really depends on where you are. If you're in, like, I don't know where you are, but if you're, like, in southeastern DFW, for example, you don't really have to worry about it. But, I mean, if you're up, I don't know. If you're like in this area, for example, like Ardmore, more maybe you probably should. Tacona, you definitely should. This area storms will definitely make it that far south, but really just really depends on where you are more than anything. Look at the sky. Looks like storms moving to Sterling and the Duncan area. Yeah, the storms are primarily all moving to the south and east because that's where the outflow boundary again is going. Uh, Jonathan, it's embedded in OBS. Is uh, North Carolina okay? Yes, North Carolina primarily just seeing maybe some gusty winds or small hail. Overall, severe threat is pretty low tonight for those areas now. Everything will start to wind down down there as we have uh, daylight heating already ending over in those locations. Good news there. Zooming up my chat here. Yep. Will be any sort of... Uh, Weather any sort over in Battlefield, Missouri. Um, I don't know where Battlefield is, but uh, let me take a look. I don't think there's much, though. Tomorrow you won't see anything. Today's really the only chance at this point for the next few days. We might see something on Monday, but the chances are pretty low right now. I don't think you'll see anything beyond today. On the uh, velocities, yeah, I can go put that on for you. Western Illinois going to get severe weather tomorrow? No, don't think so. Take a look again. I'm pretty sure they don't. Yeah, Western Illinois. Anywhere really in the Midwest is not going to see much tomorrow. It'll be pretty dry. So yeah, and on you're probably on a low end scale of anything tomorrow. Here's a look at the velocities as of right now. Again, the strongest downburst winds possibly up to 70 miles per hour. We got a couple of areas right here, or maybe right here. That's kind of the main area. This one seems to be the main area though. And again, that's just southeast of Arnett. And uh, we have some pretty broad rotation here as well, north of 47. So that's what we got going as of right now. And ping pong ball size tail, damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour. Taking a look if we have any tornado possible label. No, we do not. But uh, definitely a little bit of broad rotation as of right now with this cell. Thank you, John, for subscribing. Appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so our sub count apparently is 60 subscribers away right now from 9,500. So, again, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, I would appreciate it. And, uh, again, if you're not on our Discord server and you do have Discord, join our Discord. Uh, it's going to be put in the chat there, I think, from Nightbot, maybe. We'll see. But uh, join our Discord. Also, you can click the link down in the description below. We uh, post a lot of stuff on our Discord server that you might not see on stream. So, join our little community over there on Discord. It looks like it's not going to show up in chat, but again, if you're on Discord, definitely get on to our Discord server. Again, link in the description below. Again, this storm is currently moving off to the west. It's moved pretty stationary, but that's what we got so far. Uh, Paul, I don't think so. I don't think we've had any today. I think we've seen any tornado warnings. At least from when I've been live, we haven't had any tornado warnings. We have had tornado possible labels on a couple of storms, but at this point, I have not seen anything in terms of an actual um, tornado warn storm. And again, the overall tornado threat is pretty low today. It will be again low tomorrow. Sunday, it might increase. Again, a lot of factors are going to go into that forecast. But as of right now, very low end chance for a tornado up in like Rapid Falls. That's basically about it. Or Rapid, Rapid Forks, excuse me, up in North Dakota, maybe Northwestern Minnesota. That's our main threat, though. Okay, so I actually do the exclamation point. So yeah, there we go. Discord's in the chat now. We should be probably getting a new warning on that storm here pretty shortly. Uh, we do have a new severe thunderstorm warning up in far eastern portions now of, uh, of Illinois. This is producing damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour and as well as some quarter-sized hail. For Claremont, Sumner, Calhoun, 
going towards St. Francisville. So again, new series of thunderstorm warning over here in Illinois. That's moving down to the southeast as of right now. Storm there as of right now. That's what we got going here. Take a look at the velocities on this storm as well. Take a look if we got anything on here. Primarily just damaging winds as of now. Obviously, you kind of see a little, maybe a little false hook trying to develop there. It's not, it's not a thing to be concerned about, but definitely something to maybe kind of see on the radar at least. Yeah, no new warnings over on the East Coast, anything like that. Primarily just in Oklahoma. And uh, here's a look at the cell, by the way, up here in eastern Wyoming. I want to mention this real quick. The storm is producing quarter size tail, damaging winds around 60 miles per hour. That's for Clareton. It's going toward Newcastle. That's basically the reason why I'm mentioning it. So uh, just make sure if you're in Newcastle, just kind of be aware of that storm. Again, moving off to the northeast as of right now. So we got going as of right now in those locations. Let me go back over to this storm. We got a new warning on this Oklahoma one here in a brief moment. So we'll see what that all entails. Yeah, it's a little false hook. It's nothing, you know, in terms of actually something to be concerned about in the short term, but definitely something to maybe watch long term. Look at Canada. I can't look at Canada on this radar, so I won't be able to. I know there's a tornado warning up there, but I literally cannot show it on this radar. It just doesn't work. Yeah, that is possibly a tornado on the ground. Near Mars, Mars Lynn, maybe? Yeah, that's a pretty dangerous storm up that way. Why do you think the three worst tornadoes are in the past 15 years? That's a long term. Um, I mean, the only ones that really come to mind are the ones that have happened in Oklahoma. And there was one, I can't remember which one it was, but there was one in, I think it was Mississippi. That was a little bit more recent. Yeah, the Moore one, that was the one. Um, I think we've had more, wasn't there a Moore tornado and a Norman one? Did we have two? Joplin, yeah, Joplin definitely is up at the top of the rank there, I think. Moore, definitely one of the other ones. There's one in Mississippi that was pretty bad, but yeah, Joplin, definitely. Moore, probably second. Reno, maybe. Maybe a third. Yeah, those are definitely some of the... Moore and Joplin, though, are definitely at the top of the list. Tuscaloosa, yeah, that's the other one. Tuscaloosa was bad, too. That, that's the one that I was thinking of, yeah. Hey, Weather, how you doing? Welcome back. Or Joplin, Tuscaloosa. I would probably, yeah, that's probably what I would rank it, in my opinion. The uh, severe storm, by the way, is starting to move a bit more to the south now towards Strong City. So just a little bit of update there. Again, Western Oklahoma is where we're looking. Hey, Storm Chaser, how you doing? Back. There's an EF4 tornado in Minnesota. I don't think that's true at all. I don't think we I don't think we saw a single tor I don't know if we really saw any tornadoes yesterday to begin with. Uh new severe thunderstorm warning for Cheyenne is that the name? I can't remember what it was. It's probably that name though. Uh Ham Hammond or Hamon as well as Raiden, Durham, Angora as well as Roll Crawford, Strong City as well as Arnett are included in this new warning again damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour and as well as half dollar size tails possible with this storm. Again that's tracking down to the south now. A little bit different direction from before yeah no tornado reports from yesterday by the way not at all uh storm they're just ordinary storms or they're strong there's nothing in georgia that's severe right now again gusty winds maybe up to 50 miles per hour as possible uh and on our recommend radar scope or my radar uh and either there might be a severe weather outbreak on Sunday in Minnesota. Again, a lot of things to be determined, so stay tuned. Thank you, Ron, Starjet, as well as Steve for subscribing. Appreciate it. Weather, it, it, I'm telling you, the GFS model do not look at it anywhere beyond seven days. It's just been, it's been so inaccurate recently. Yeah, Joplin was the most, uh, one of the more, more fatal tornadoes, but um, yeah, more and Joplin are probably the top to that rank overall in terms of, you know, being the worst tornadoes in recent times. We have a couple of new warnings, nothing too crazy though. For main focus right now on this storm, again, this is near Hamon and Raiden, 
again it's going down to the south in gora durham crawford strong city all included in the warning again the main area right now is moving down towards strong city so strong city will be mostly in the track over the next several minutes Yeah, so storm, all that means is basically there might be some gusty winds up to 50 to 55 miles per hour. That's all you're looking at over that direction. Uh, Kentucky, Kentucky right now, I don't think there's much in Kentucky, but there might be some storms later tonight. Yeah, Bobby, we're talking about like the last 15 years. I think that's what that was the question, I think so. Yeah, those were bad too. I mean, anything before, you know, 2000, even 2010, anything prior to that, there were some bad ones back then. I don't think there's a whole lot though in the first decade of this year, but there was a lot more like the 1980s and 1990s. There was a little bit more in terms of damaging tornadoes. Uh, and on it's to be determined. Again, anything on Sunday is to be determined. Again, I'll keep you updated with the latest here on our YouTube channel. Our next forecast will have more details on it. Uh, Steven, no problem. I appreciate you tuning in. Um, the storms overall, main threats can be damaging winds. It'll be pretty scattered, though, for those areas. Welcome back, Bobby. Sounds good, Storm Chaser. Have a good night. Appreciate you tuning in. Sorry to hear that, by the way. Hope you get better soon. Greensburg tornado destroyed like 80% of the town. The Moore tornado was really bad too. That was a large one too. Tuscaloosa too. There were some honestly really bad tornadoes we've seen. Thank you, Selena, as well as Bobby for subscribing, guys. I appreciate it. Welcome. Which year was that weather? I don't remember that one off the top of my head. Sorry to hear that, Storm Chaser. Again, I hope you get better soon. Make sure you get to the doctor or something like that. Make sure you check it out. Hopefully it gets better, though, soon. Ice is definitely a good thing to do, too. From Steven. April 2015? Uh, probably not. At least I don't remember seeing it. If you have a video to it, though, you can always send it to me on Discord or uh, Twitter. No problem, Bobby. Appreciate you tuning in. Thank you. Mayfield was bad too. There was a lot, honestly, if I were to make a list, I mean, off the top of my head, again, I think Joplin more are the more ones that come to my head, but there was a lot of bad tornadoes and, you know, I should actually, I might make a video on it sometime. But... There's nothing, there's no rotation up in northeastern Oklahoma. These are just regular showers. It looks like maybe an isolated storm. Zooming out again. We got a new warning over in South Carolina now, damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour. Few warnings. Yeah, if you have any questions about any particular warnings, you can always feel free to leave me a message in the chat. Let's move down to the south. Let's go back over to the hail radar, take a look and see what we got in terms of the hail with this storm. So moving down to the south as of right now. And the hail radar is updated now. And it still shows around half dollar size hail. Possibly, actually, it sh still shows up to golf ball size hail, but I don't think it's that high. Again, still some pretty significant hail, though, going toward possibly some areas like Strong City. Again, heading down to the south right now. 283, as well as 33, are kind of on the track right now. Yeah, this is the storm we got going on right now. Uh, Christopher, no. Discord is just what we use for our little community. I don't do gaming, though. No. It's just... Honestly, Discord, I think, is used by a lot more than just gaming nowadays. It's always been a very good platform for chatting and communities and stuff like that. Here's a look at the velocities on the storm. Again, not a whole lot. Mainly winds. Mainly damaging winds. I'm not seeing anything in terms of rotation as of right now with the storm. Mainly rain and lightning. Yeah, it makes sense. There might be some gusty winds, but definitely not out of the question that there might not be either. Okay, I'll have to look that after the stream weather. I'll definitely check it out. 
Uh, as of right now, no rotation on any of these storms, at least the ones in Oklahoma and whatnot. Uh, let me go back over here to Illinois real quick. There was a little bit more ongoing with these storms, but I don't think either of these are rotating either. Uh, this storm's actually kind of gotten a little bit of a false hook going, really. I see the storm. It's very small, too. <laughs> it's not rotating, but it's actually pretty interesting. Go higher up in the atmosphere. There's some rotation at the very high levels, but it's very broad anyways. It's pretty interesting, though. Very little small little hook kind of trying to develop there. You're in Wichita Falls and you don't see any storms. They're off to your north, uh, up that direction right now. Actually, in, there's actually a downpour now in Wichita Falls, but they are moving into your area right now. None of them are severe, but they are producing some gusty winds right now. And this is a pretty interesting storm. It has a pretty nice little shape to its little hook there, but it's not really rotating. At least near the surface. It's a pretty impressive storm, though. Yeah, it has a lot. I mean, it's a very, uh, the storm overall definitely can have a pretty good, good amount of inflow going into it, just due to the fact there's nothing out in front of it. So could very well get some inflow, but overall, I'm not seeing anything that would make me believe that this has a tornado or anything like that right now. And the velocities at the surface, not very impressive. We're seeing mostly just damaging winds, which they're definitely around 60, if not even maybe a little bit higher than that. Go a little bit higher up in the atmosphere right now. The winds are slightly more rotating. Slightly. Definitely an impressive storm, though. Impressive little cell. What are my predictions for hurricane season? Um, as of right now, I'm thinking it's going to be fairly normal overall. I think it's going to be a pretty normal overall hurricane season. I know the National Hurricane Center is saying a little bit above normal, uh, but I think it'll be pretty normal for the you know what we're expecting it's actually pretty interesting i looked up the average but uh the, the name systems on average we usually have uh, three by August 3rd, apparently. It's actually interesting. We actually are so far slightly above average, but we're going to have a very overall, very limited ongoing tropical time throughout the next two weeks or so. A lot of wind shear right now in the Atlantic Ocean. It's going to prevent really much of any developments, but um, let me take a look again at the latest on the tropics, though, real quick. Not sure if we have any new updates as of recently. The wind shear has been really strong, though, in the Atlantic Ocean. There definitely always could be like a quick little development in the Gulf of Mexico that's never out of the question, but overall, it's probably not going to happen. But yeah, nothing's really showing up even on the computer models over the next you know couple of weeks, but definitely something to watch. Thank you, Elliot and Cooper, by the way, for subscribing. I appreciate it. This warning has been condensed, by the way. It's still producing damaging winds around 60 miles per hour. St. Francisville is still included, as well as quarter-sized tail. Let's again move it down to the southeast. Now, it's a fairly discreet cell. You never know. It could very well get a little bit more rotation on it. But as of right now, it's been fairly minimal in terms of surface winds, in terms of, you know, rotation. Again, if you go a little bit higher up, again, this is a bit higher up in the atmosphere. We got a little bit more, but again, it's still broad. It has a little bit more wind, though. It's still a little bit more broad. Nothing really tight at this point. It looks like maybe a little bit more tightening, possibly, uh, you know, possibly, you know, seven, eight, maybe nine, ten thousand feet up in the atmosphere. But overall, it seems like the rotation is very minimal. It may, mostly looks like downburst winds to me. Uh, and, and I have absolutely no clue. It's kind of way too early to forecast something like that. Especially this early in the hurricane season. Let me go over to, uh, let's see. Don't know if we have any mesoscale discussions. Nothing new as of right now. Take a while, look at everything again. 
back over here to texas and as well as oklahoma real quick again we have an ongoing storm still producing a considerable threat of damaging winds around 70 miles per hour and as well as a half dollar size tail this storm's starting to move a bit quicker now by the way it's moving uh, at least 10 to 15 miles per hour if not a little bit faster that's near strong city and moving down to the south as of right now and we'll get our new new uh storm prediction center outlook for the rest of this evening by the way in six minutes so stay tuned or we should be at least Yeah, Florida will see something this year. Again, I don't know when it will be and what, how bad it will be, but we're, we're, I mean, honestly, Florida's forecasted to see something in terms of tropical activity. Hey, Daniel, how you doing? Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Uh, ZMD, we definitely could see a couple of tornadoes this weekend. Definitely on Sunday, especially. It looks like we have a better chance on Sunday. That would be primarily for Minnesota. Storm definitely has some very large hail, though. Uh, any new updates on this warning? Nope, nothing new. Same things, still going with this. Let's look at the velocities. Yeah, I'm not even really seeing much. The damaging wind threat is primarily up here. Looks like a lot more of just, you know, regular, maybe some hail down to the south. We got a couple of different parts of the storm right now. More wind off to the north, down here to the south, a little bit more in terms of hail near Strong City. Uh, Rachel, this is currently over in western Oklahoma. Is there weather? I didn't hear about that. Not hear about that at all. Cool. Again, that's moving down to the south as of right now. Uh, we got a new special weather statement. I think this one is actually new. Yeah, this just got issued. This is for Wichita Falls. Uh, Petrolia as well. This includes northern Clay County. Again, Wichita County is also included. Gusty winds now up to 55 miles per hour are possible here. And we also got a pretty well-defined outflow boundary that you can see here that's again moving down to the south and southeast as of right now. Some other strong storms as well back up here west of Ardmore uh, near Loco and as, as well as Tatums. Harrelton, all included in that. Velma. So again, little area of gusty winds currently ongoing down here to the south and southeast. A lot of other storms on still ongoing. We got a whole cluster of storms also near Lubbock. So we've got a lot of activity still ongoing as of right now. Let's go back over to the Illinois storm. Let's see if there's any new developments on this. And there was a little bit of very broad rotation with this storm. I mean, the storms will remain very well defined, to say the least. Remain very well defined with its little shape here. Has definitely some inflow but it's overall still stayed at this point pretty minimal for winds at the surface definitely damaging winds at the surface but not seeing anything in rotation near the surface a little bit higher up though there's a little bit more rotation there uh and on possibly in the northwestern portions of wisconsin but overall again the threat's gonna be pretty low over that direction and again Sunday's severe weather event will be highly dependent on what happens overnight into Sunday morning. By the way, I thank you, Jonathan, for sending those photos. They're uh, definitely very cool. I like looking at the infrared amateur. It's pretty cool. Um, for Jay, I was thinking about it. I'm not entirely sure. The main reason is is because uh, when the live streams finish, people think it's either still live after I'm done live streaming. Like last night, I literally had somebody comment about 15 times thinking that the live stream is still going on. Um, that's the, one of the main issues. Uh, I might have to start renaming my titles after the stream to something along the lines of like the severe weather event of blah, 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 whatever day it is as it happened or something like along those lines. But um, yeah, that's probably what I have to end up doing. Wind gusts right now, by the way, estimated by right around 55 miles per hour. And velocities as of right now still remaining at the surface. Again, not that strong. Still a little bit of hook shape though on it. Sounds good, Andy. Have a great night. It's cool weather. It's, can't wait to see that too. Love seeing new computer models. Uh, JJ, because... A lot of storms in terms of this setup today have very strong downburst winds. Um, this radar specifically usually underestimates the wind speeds too, just for reference. We usually have a lot more, um, 
uh, like radar scope for example is pretty accurate they usually show pretty accurate readings this software does not usually show the spot on uh values so that's kind of one of the main reasons why but yeah if they have the potential for damaging winds up to 60 it'll be warned for that this storm particularly definitely has some strong downburst winds right now and even 55 being estimated by radar on this radar is probably about 65 uh no music definitely, definitely not a monster tornado we're not looking at a high tornado threat or anything like that this is primarily just going to be you know a brief or weak tornado if anything were to develop the overall atmosphere tonight for any tornadic activity is going to be pretty minimal it's not anything too significant tonight again if you're just tuning in by the way for the first time again i would appreciate if you hit the subscribe button down below really would appreciate it again it's free to do the red button down below would really appreciate it if you're new here as well make sure to hit the like button if you're joining the stream so far Uh, if there were to be a tornado threat this weekend, it would be in Minnesota. And again, there might be a strong tornado if we have the right setup. But again, a lot of things in between now and then. Again, I'll keep you up there with the latest. I'll have a forecast out for that tomorrow. Sometime around lunchtime or so. On the latest on that. Right, we still have some strong velocities. Again, we have a little bit of rotation here. Overall, it's mainly just strong downwards winds, though. Been an impressive storm to say the least, but I don't think it's going to be able to develop a tornado in the short term. I think it's more of a long term threat, possibly. Actually, the storms are forecasted to stay to still stay somewhat strong throughout the overnight hours going to Kentucky. But the overall threats are going to be pretty low. All right, let's take a look at the latest outlook i don't think i got a new outlook yet we yeah so we actually do have a new outlook uh tornado threat is actually now no longer existent so that's good news let's go and take a look at the storm prediction center's outlook here for tonight uh so it's pretty low at this point we still have severe weather ongoing north of the marginal risk so there we still could see severe weather again uh being isolated in this area over the next few hours definitely not out of the question but the marginal risk now only includes going through tennessee it also actually includes arkansas still goes through oklahoma again goes through all the way up to the north Still a slight risk, by the way, up in Montana. Uh, we have a marginal risk still ongoing for those in the Carolinas for at least the next couple of hours. It includes Georgia, northern Florida still included, Tennessee, Kentucky, as I mentioned before. Uh, again, I cannot rule out that we still see some damaging winds, again, up to 60 miles per hour through southern Indiana. I know it's not included, but we very well could still see that threat, especially with these storms over here. Uh, but overall, tornado threat seems to be pretty low. Again, I can't rule out still a brief or weak tornado tonight, but the threat is still low. And again, with that cell, it had a pretty decent hook, had decent inflow, just not a whole lot of a low-level jet or shear tonight. So we're not really looking at, again, much of a tornado threat. Uh, but we still have that potential for maybe a few strong or severe storms over the next hour or so here in Oklahoma, and as well as North Texas. And you can see the whole cluster of storms going through areas like Wichita Falls right now. And again, the one cell that's currently still a considerable threat, producing still some damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour, and as well as that potential for maybe some half dollar size hail is still ongoing here in Oklahoma. So that's kind of what we got going as of right now in terms of the severe weather. And again, here's a look at the radar. So again, this is near Strong City right now. We're probably seeing some large hail there as that tracks down to the south. Thank you, Connie, Retro, uh, Leslie, as well as Rachel for all subscribing, by the way. I appreciate it. No problem, Jane. I'm great. I appreciate you tuning in as well. I'm glad I could answer your questions. Again, I hope everything gets better soon. I do appreciate, it. again, your super chat from earlier. Uh, yeah, I, told you, I was getting about 55, so pretty close to accurate there. No problem, Olaf. I appreciate you tuning in as well. I do appreciate, again, you becoming a member tonight. I really do appreciate your support. Um, let me go back over to the hail radar again. Let's see what the hail is being estimated on this storm. Again, going through Strong City right now, moving down to the south. And uh, yeah, hail as of right now, where in the world is my... Wow, that just closed out out of nowhere. That was weird. Okay, let's go back to it. The hail core is definitely pretty prominent. Um, let's go back down to the storm, though. So yeah, the hail right now being estimated by radar is right around ping pong ball that's being estimated but again we've had a half dollar size hail on this storm for a while and it's being estimated as high as 10 egg size tail i don't think it's even that high in terms of that size tail but it probably is right around half dollar maybe a little bit higher possibly as high as ping pong ball but overall the yeah, hail still remains i mean even half dollar to ping pong ball it's a pretty minimal difference overall both of them do cause damage in the same regard so 
So one can do slightly more damage than the other. That's kind of what we're looking at there. And Strong City currently seeing a storm there. Moving down to the south, southeast. Uh, Steven, probably not too much longer. This stream was supposed to be pretty short anyways. So it's not going to be a long stream. Um, I will have possibly a bit of a longer stream on... I don't know if I'll have much of a stream tomorrow. I might have a stream briefly tomorrow. We'll see. That'll be primarily up in the Dakota area, North Dakota. That might be tomorrow night. Otherwise, I'm not expecting to be live much until Sunday. Sunday, I might go live for a little bit longer, possibly into early next week. We have a positively tilted trough, though, Sunday, so the overall severity of those storms will be probably pretty minimal. Buffering? I don't think it's buffering. It doesn't say it on my end. Thanks, Patrick. I appreciate that. All right, cool. Again, this is the storm ongoing near Strong City, still producing some pretty large hail. Again, damaging winds upwards of 70 miles per hour. Still ongoing for Strong City. Again, Crawford, Roll, and Durham are also included in this warning. See you later, uh, ZMD. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, yes, JJ, I do occasionally use the correlation coefficient. Uh, tabs, as of right now, nothing severe in South Georgia. Mainly just going to be gusty winds for the next two hours over that direction as well. Nothing too significant. Again, we got ongoing storms down here to the south. These are all still possibly producing gusty winds upwards of 55 miles per hour. And again, a lot of severe weather still to come possibly tonight. For the most part, though, the overall severity in the southern plains will start to go downhill from here. And that also includes even off into the southeast. There is still a possibility for some damaging winds again in Tennessee, possibly Kentucky as well. Uh, overnight tonight, that will be mainly be just damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour tonight anyways. This is the, again, the one severe thunderstorm we've got on going as of right now. 70 mile per hour winds, half dollar size tail still possible with this storm. Again, hanging down to the south as of right now. Back over to the velocities here. And uh, again, not a whole lot in terms of uh, velocities. There actually shows a little bit of mixing there, but I don't think that's completely accurate. Yeah, it's probably not anything too, to be, too much to be concerned about. Correlation coefficient, by the way, is showing a decent amount of hail right now. You can see the hail right there. Definitely a good amount of hail with this storm. We're definitely seeing at least some, you know, quarter to half dollar, maybe even ping pong ball sized hail with this storm still near Strong City. Planes need to get the rain. Yeah, I know. The planes really do need rain. Really, anywhere in the southeast or south, excuse me, in southwest really needs to, does need the rain. And uh, the warning is disappeared, along with the radar. Everything just disappeared. What's going on? Software's glitching out right now. Weird. Roll back on the regular radar here. Uh, Kenny, I recommend either radar scope or my radar. The black means most likely uh, large, potentially very large hail. Now, in this instance, it's probably right around ping pong ball size tail right now. Does Tennessee have bad storms? Uh, nothing severe, as of what I know. There definitely could be a few some, some strong storms, though, over that direction. Gusty winds, the main threat. There is actually a decent line uh, north of Dunlap that is producing some gusty winds, but overall, severity in Tennessee will be pretty low. Yeah, that storm's again moving down to the southeast, and uh, we still got some strong storms again near Wichita Falls. But overall, the severe storms will likely start to go downhill from here, so uh, I'm actually going to end the live stream a little bit early. It's actually not early. I was planning to only do an hour or two, but I do appreciate, again, everybody tuning in tonight. Again, if you're just tuning in for the first time, I would, again, appreciate if you hit the subscribe button down below. Again, we do live streams like this all the time. We have daily weather forecasts as well, and uh, make sure to like button as well as you've been, if you did enjoy this live stream. Again, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And uh, let me go do this real quick. If you have any questions about any of the weather, you can always join, again, our Discord server. You only have to make it, you can make an account on Discord if you want. If you're already on Discord, join our Discord server. And if you're a member, you also get a free uh, role if you're a member. So go ahead and check that out as well. Let me find this real quick. There we go. 
so yeah that's what we got okay uh i might go live again tomorrow we'll see not entirely sure i might also go live on sunday but again it's all to be determined uh you'll get the latest updates though over on our youtube or on our discord server in terms of when we'll go live and whatnot so make sure to join that again link is in the chat from nightbot um and again if you want to become a member you can click the top link in the description it's only 2.99 per month you get a lot of benefits as well exclusive forecasts and whatnot so check that out all right thank you guys all for tuning in i do appreciate it have a great rest of your night did not mean to bring that up again i do appreciate everybody though having uh, stopping by and whatnot have a great rest of your night guys and we'll see you again soon Thank <laughs> you.